Behind every spectacular home design is vision, imagination, and attention to detail. What becomes the final product is a result of months of planning and hard work. Space by space, we're going to show you exactly how that happens. I'm Becky. And I'm Brett. We're siblings who build custom homes together and have a lot of fun doing it. Sometimes too much fun. Come along for the journey from rendering to reality. Come on, Brett, let's go. Today, we're gonna show you three incredible spaces. Sun-drenched beachfront, inviting family ties, and classic Villa Bonita. I'm Becky, and I'm an interior designer in Southern California. I'm Brett, I'm a general contractor. I build custom homes. And we're siblings, brother and sister. So usually I'll do the interior design aspect of the home and then I pass it over to Brett and he does the construction, but we, there's a lot of working together. Her interior design creation helps, totally helps me, but not just me, it helps our subcontractors, our cabinet guys, our framers. Having her renderings and her you know, drawings and details and the specifications that the homeowner has designed with Becky helps make my job easier. And it's amazing to see how this drawing turns into reality. I mean, you know, you finish the job and you look at it and, you know, I have, have had a couple people say, is that the drawing or yeah. is that Real. the actual house? And so, you know, it's, it's... We try to execute what we design for the most part, unless he says no. There's the budget <laughs> and then there's, you know, making it. I think Becky likes to get it, I mean, she likes to get it done and get it done now. And I, I probably like to think through it and work through the details. Yeah, which I think that's why we work so well together is, that where, I, where I'm like, oh, we gotta get it done, let's just hurry and get it done, here's my renderings, make it happen. And he's like, well, there's all this other stuff we gotta do. But I think at the end, when you put your minds together and you team up with things, the end result always ends up, at least yeah. our experience, it always ends up Probably better than we'd hoped. Good, yeah. As long as you put forth the effort and you give it your all. Today we're talking about kitchens, and I feel like that's like your heart of your home, that's probably where you are the most. I focus on that probably the most out of your entire home. You've got to think through your appliances, you've got to think through the cabinet layout, the countertops, and, and how they all work together. Yeah. You know, you've got your, you know, you've heard the basic working triangle between the sink yeah. and the cooking area and the refrigeration area, and making sure that flows, and, and, and also space for multiple people to yeah. get through each other, and you know, when you're cooking, it becomes kind of that fun gathering area for a family or a friend group. You know, you've got to be able to synergistically work together and, and make yeah. it functional. When it comes to the kitchen, it all starts with the design. When I start designing a kitchen, I like to start by picking the slab. Picking the slab helps me just kind of build from there and see where I want to go. If I want to use a marble or a porcelain, I prefer marble, but I know that's kind of hard to maintain and so people don't like to use marble, but there's great alternatives. We use porcelain a lot. I know we use that in the Family Ties project, and that turned out really nice. People always want the look of marble, but are scared to do marble because of the maintenance. I personally love marble. I know you do. I would do it over and over and over again if people will go for it. Well, you that's the difference. You like you think you can design anything <laughs> and it'll just work, but I know, the functionality, but... Well, you have to wrap your brain around it. If you're gonna do marble, you have to be okay with imperfections. You have to be okay with a little etching. That means like where you see a little difference in the sheen or you might have a little stain. Eventually it kind of goes away and you, you have honest, to be okay with yeah, it. Yeah, you have to be okay with it. You have to be okay with imperfections. Or if you're not, you go with like... And then you go with something manufactured. You go with like a porcelain. Yeah. I mean, there's so many products today that I think whether it's flooring or countertops yeah. or backsplashes, you can look like natural product, yeah. but still be... But nothing beats the, more, the actual... Uh, I, I know, <laughs> I know. After the slab, I'd like to use maybe like a warm wood. This is one that I love. It just feels warm. It's a natural white oak just kind of gives you that inviting feel so everything is not just white, stark white. We've been using a lot of topes. This is just kind of like a warm taupe, just to kind of bring in that warmth, just to break up all the white. So next we usually pick the lighting. Sometimes I'll pick the lighting first. If I find something that I really love, I'm like, okay, we're using that lighting and we're gonna go from there. But as you can see here, we use the black lighting just to offset all the white marble. Um, and I think it complements everything really nicely. I like to mix metals in the kitchen, and in here we did gold, black, and polished chrome. 
a, just some kind of a mix just to give it interest when you walk in and everything is not the same. All in all, when designing kitchens, you just want it to be functional and really pretty. That's really where you spend most of your time and you want to just look at it as an overall vision. Don't take it piece by piece, kind of you want everything to feel balanced and everything to kind of cohesively work together. Once we get the design for the kitchen, now it's time for construction. We're here at our parade home active job site you can hear a lot going on in the background we got the stucco guys going we got the insulators going getting ready for drywall we got stuff everywhere we're excited for the progress let's look at the kitchen a little bit if you look right here this is our kitchen layout we kind of like that open feel you've got the kitchen the dining the great room two-story great room with great lighting and then I love this about the kitchen where you've got these two flanking windows that flank the, the stove and just give you natural light into the kitchen. Another thing I'd love to show you is this pantry entrance. So typically a pantry has a door on it, you know, you, you close off the clutter, but here we wanted more of an open feel. You can see a nice arch going into the pantry. We're gonna leave it with open shelving, more of a working pantry. As you, you know, walk in, we'll do more decorative lighting and countertops and shelves, so it'll feel like more like an open working area. I love the look and the feel that Becky's designed here. So as we walk through this kitchen, kind of watch your step, there's a lot going on. We got the drywall mud, we're just trying to work through, you know, the stages of construction and that, that's how it goes. We hit it at this stage, just finished insulating the walls with the blown in fiberglass. Uh, we're going to start sheetrocking as soon as we get our inspection and you can kind of see this room is all setting up for a nice finish. But you know, you transition from the kitchen, the dining, the great room, it all kind of molds into one big room. And if you look, you can kind of look across, you can see, you know, how the kitchen talks to the family room and the family room talks to the dining room. And it just makes for an awesome gathering spot. I love how this is gonna feel and look. You know, one thing that's cool about this room is it's not huge. I mean, it's not a big house pad. And so you've got to create great spaces that will house a lot of people in a small house pad. And I think that's what we've tried to do here with combining the great room, the kitchen, the dining area, just to create a great space for family and friends to congregate and have a great time together. So Becky creates these beautiful drawings, these beautiful designs, and we kind of try to put them into construction the best way we know how. And a lot of times she'll put these pendants in location and sconces in locations that we don't know exactly where they're at. And so we go in and we'll just wind wire in the wall like this or wind wire in the ceiling like this, knowing that we're not gonna pull those wires out until we know exactly where she wants them after the countertop's in, after the shelving is in, sometimes after the dining room table is in. And then we'll pull the wire down and get that pendant or that chandelier or the sconce exactly where she wants it. So she's happy and we're happy and everybody's happy in the end. So now we're taking it from Becky's designs to actual construction. You can kind of see we're about halfway through construction. We're at that stage where we've just framed it. We've brought in all the electrical, we've brought in the plumbing, the mechanical, everything that's kind of that pre-stage before we insulate and drywall. It's a very important stage. You can see all the drawings up. We've taken Becky's drawings and the cabinet drawings and just kind of put them up. Just This is just to help the plumber and the electrician to make sure he gets all his measurements exactly where we want them. And then we'll bring it out with the cabinets and the countertops and the flooring. But right now we're just making sure we hit everything to perfection so that when the reveal happens at the very end, we nail all the spots for all those items. I mean, think about viewpoint. That that has, I mean, from the beginning, I mean, it's a huge, yeah. super nice, super huge custom space. house. And then we had the clear story windows up above to create the natural light. Then you've got the window that we had to get exactly. Well, and then we had the beams. This one has beams, many, yes. many beams. And there was a lot of complications with the clear story windows that we're having. And, and the skylights, too. And the skylights, there's beams going through skylights. I mean, we had so, to prepare way up front, 
because you're ordering the size of the skylights, yeah. you're talking to the framer, you're locating the island with the cabinet guys. Yeah. The viewpoint will be amazing when it's done. It right now be. it's in the construction phase and we're still I mean, in the, you know, a little bit of the deci deciding of where things are going and how it's all going to work. There's a lot of materials in that one. There's stone, we're using tile, and then we're going to use some kind of slabs. That we're There's gonna, wood, but you're actually bringing some of the outdoor stone in through that kitchen yeah. and through the archway. I mean, you, you can kind of see as you look at Becky's renderings and how they take shape right now, they're going to all come together, but this is where the hood goes. We've got stone all along this back wall. You know, the cabinets are very intricate. The countertops, the backsplash, the flooring. It's, there's a lot going on for sure in this kitchen, and I think I'm super excited to see it come together and all the parts play. It's going to be awesome. This kitchen has so much natural light. I mean, you've got light coming in from these window walls on the back. We've got some huge skylights, and we've got these clear story windows that also bring in some natural light without bringing the glare of the sun. Um, we've got some open windows next to the cabinets here. It just is a really well-lit, well-designed kitchen. A couple of islands. You can kind of see the rough plumbing and the rough electrical. We've got an island going here, and then a second island going here just to make it it's kind of a huge family party house. I mean, it's gonna be an entertaining house for sure. It's cool seeing kitchens in the design phase, but there's nothing like a reveal. I totally agree. I love seeing the finished product. I love it at the end, not just because we're done with the work, but <laughs> just seeing it and then showing the homeowner, it just, it feels so nice. I love it. All right, we're at the beachfront. You've seen it start to finish. You saw the renderings that Becky did. You saw the construction. Now we've got the finished product. Let's go check it out. All right, we're here. We're here at beachfront. We're in the kitchen. This is one that we kind of had to be a little bit budget friendly and um, make some cuts because. Come on. I mean, when you have a backdrop like this, I mean, look at this. We started with this killer lot. You know, as I, th I think about the kitchens, some of my favorite kitchens that we've done together, the first one that comes to mind is probably beachfront. Yeah. I just love beachfront because the backdrop is yeah. the sandy beach and the, yeah. you know, the water. I and love the just... lighting in there too because it's like see-through, the big ivy pendants hanging over the island. Yeah. see-through. It's not like, doesn't block the view. Did you say you loved it even though I eliminated your beams? <laughs> I mean... That was annoying, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see, but we had, originally we had a bunch of beams going through and we had to cut those. We didn't cut them all the way. I mean, look, we did beams in the great room. They That's looked true. great. That's Maybe they true. weren't beams and tongue and groove throughout the whole ceiling, but we still did good. It That's looks true. great. We also did quartz on the countertops. This was um, one that was a budget conscious quartz and it, I think it pulled everything together. We also added it to the backsplash, which was great. And typically we don't, I haven't really done a ton of wood here. And this one we wanted to set it apart just because there's so much white. We wanted some contrast and added wood open shelvings, which I feel like makes it light and airy in contrast to some of the heavy cabinets. So we wanted to keep it just airy and light and bring some of the wood up from the ground. And I think it just added so much to the space. Becky always loves to do open shelving. I, I think the first time you did it in one of the homes that we built, I was like, well, where are you gonna store stuff? There's no room. I mean, she did shelves across everywhere thing. in the kitchen. I was like, well, that's not gonna work. But it's actually- We use, I mean, I even have it in my own house. We use everything that I put on there. I mean, in this house, this is, you know, a vacation rental, so they don't, it just looks pretty. But it adds a whole other element of light and airy versus a little bit more heavy. So I feel like it just kind of made this kitchen just flow, especially into this area. We're sitting in the little kitchen nook area, where, or sometimes we'll call it a breakfast nook, where there's at least eight people can sit here. You can slide around. It's great for kids. Look at all the kids you can stuff back there. <laughs> and it just flows nicely. Sometimes when you do a, a table and chairs, you, you don't have as much room. So I feel like this, we kind of wanted to push it over. So that's why we decided to do the banquet. We didn't want it to be in, in that walkway. And it just gave it a ton more room and you could sit a lot more people. We have lighting here. We did mixed metals in here. We did silver, polished chrome, and gold. 
and I feel like that just kind of adds layers to your home. I think one thing we did, you know, you, you kind of designed a wood floor look, yeah. but we put in LVP, which is, you know, like luxury a vinyl, alternative. but it's super durable and it, it looks good. I mean, that was probably the comment that most people have made. Yeah. This floor looks so good and it's yeah. durable and it's waterproof and all that. So I think that was a win. The one thing about this house too is there's a ton of texture. Baskets and linens and different ropes that we've used and stone. I think another thing you did with the design is, you know, both the architecture and the interior design is create spaces for gathering. Yeah. I mean, you've got a great gathering kitchen, you've got a gathering banquette, you've got a gathering dining and the great room and it all flows together. And then what I love is the transition to outside. I mean, you've got this huge door that is 16 feet long 10 feet high, but you can open 12 of the 16 feet to feel like you're going outside. And that invites you right to the outdoor yeah. sandy beach and the water and the pool. Yep. We and tried to connect all that stuff. We tried to connect the indoors into the outside. So you'll see some of those same textures inside as they are outside and it just makes it flow and it draws people out so that, you know, everyone's gathering in here, they can gather out there and it just makes a super cohesive space. I personally love to incorporate your fridge into your cabinetry. I feel like it just blends seamlessly. Um, and luckily we had the budget for this. I mean, <laughs> usually that costs a little bit more money to cover your fridge with um, the cabinet fronts. But I think it makes such a huge difference just to make everything flow. And in here, just with how pretty and light it is, we wanted to make sure we did that. I think we did the same thing with the dishwasher. Yeah, but it just kind of helps covered. it go away. And then you got the, you know, you did the pantry door with the glass. It just yeah. makes it a little more inviting. Yeah. That's also just another little tip to just elevate the space. The, not, just not a plain door, and it's not that much more expensive to add that. And I think it elevates the space instead of just having a solid door right there. Everybody has a budget, whether it's a $5 million home or whether it's a, you know, a $500,000 home, everybody has a budget. And so, you know, she can design to the top, but it doesn't always work with the budget. And so we have to compromise, you know that. We have to, we have to do what works. I wash on everything. I do not. <laughs> you just have to work through it. Yeah, we do. And when has it not turned out good? No. Yeah, and sometimes it works out better. All right, you guys have seen Beachfront. It was a rental, we tried to do it on a budget and I think we pulled it off. There's a ton of texture, really light, bright spaces, tons of light coming through the windows. I think it, it worked for the resort. Yeah. I mean, it's a great, great house for yep. the resort area we're in. But now we're gonna go check out another one. Let's go see. We're here at Villa Bonita and this kitchen is one of my favorites. It actually turned out better than I thought it would. I it's agree. awesome, let's go check it out. So we're here at Villa Bonita and this is one of my all time faves. Somewhere in one of my products I was like, I really wanna do these black shelves and this is the one that got them. And I feel like they turned out so good. It's one of the, my favorite parts of the kitchen. It just kinda adds a pop and it's something different. They're made out of iron. They were custom made for this kitchen and I think they yeah, turned out good. It did, it wasn't easy. I mean, <laughs> it took a little, you know, something we've never done before. Yeah. And so that happens a lot where she comes up with this design and says, make it happen. And, and you doesn't happen. tell us how or He's what. He's a yes man. We found a, you know, a metal guy that could do it and make it look good. And I think we delivered what you yeah, wanted. Yeah, no, right? it's, it turned out better than I thought. I think it's a great addition to the kitchen. It, and we did a waterfall edge. If you see on the sides, it's waterfall edge, which is kind of hard to fabricate. But again, the master well, I don't did, know did a good job. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it turned out really good. I feel like it was exactly how we wanted it to, exactly what we had envisioned in our design boards, and they executed it perfectly. I think I love the, the waterfall edge on the yeah. countertops. And that was a countertop that you wanted to use marble on. I did. But, but we, I, I wanted we to did, use it so bad. It turned out so good because we used it a honed porcelain. Like it looks a lot like yeah. So the honed porcelain, you know, with yeah. the waterfall edge still looks I think it, it broke up like all the, the wood since we used the white oak cabinetry on all the exterior cabinets and underneath the waterfall. So I think that really helped break it up in there. And I love how it turned out. One thing that's a little bit unique about this kitchen is it actually has two different types of open shelving. So there's the wood in the kind of pan butler's pantry area. When you look at it, at it on paper, I was like, is this gonna work? Is this actually gonna function and look okay? But I think it's just something different and unique that makes this kitchen special. All the cabinets are white oak, just almost with like a natural stain. There's not much to it. We mismatch some of the hardware. We have pulls, we have knobs on the cabinets. 
We also have black and gold. So in this kitchen, we have obviously we have porcelain countertops and we decided to take that up in the backsplash in one area. And then in another area, we decided to do a kind of a coordinating color backsplash with tile in another area, which I feel like they just blended perfectly together and just something different to layer in other materials to just add interest. And I feel like that's one thing that's unique about this kitchen is it's, it's interesting. There's kind of different stuff that we just decided to do in this kitchen that we've never done. And I think it all pulled together so nice. I think the way you design your backsplash is to go up the wall, through the shelves, yeah. carry to the ceiling. Yeah. It just makes it look so much more rich and yeah. finished. It just looks more custom. Yeah. Now, the other, the other thing I love about this kitchen is the pantry. Kind of that working pantry that's a little bit hidden, yeah. but also feels part of the kitchen. The main kitchen. It just, yeah. it kind of just disappears around the corner, but it's easy to access, and so you can work yeah. and then come out. And but we also made it look really pretty. So the family here at Villa Bonita really love this kitchen design, and we feel like we executed it exactly the way they wanted it. It turned out great. I love it. I love it too. Let's go check out our other kitchens that we're doing. Okay, we we're moving along. Now we're in the kitchen of the Family Ties Project and just overall this kitchen just feels light and bright. It has some warmth with some wood tones. We also used a black island, which I think helped offset all the wood flooring. I love this countertop. Of course, I love marble, but most people don't like the maintenance of marble. So we used a porcelain that looks a lot like marble. The veining is really pretty. It doesn't feel like it's painted on or anything. It just, I feel like it came together so nicely. And it's one of my favorite marble alternatives to use. We also decided to use kind of these bright and airy lights. Um, they, they're clear, they're glass, they're not hindering like any of your sight lines. They really integrate well with the space and we used some brushed gold. We used brushed gold on the finishes here. I think this is one of the spots where your all your finishes, you have a lot going on in here with the painted cabinets in the white, the painted cabinets in the black, and then the stained oak cabinets. Yeah. I mean, all these colors, I remember being a little nervous, like, are all these colors gonna come together? Because you've got a stainless steel cooktop, you've got the brushed gold fixtures, yeah. and the brushed gold cabinet hardware, and everything is like, whoa, there's a lot. But you know what, it actually, trust your designer. It worked, and it looks great. I feel like it really came together. Even though there is a lot of finishes and textures and everything, it just, it, it all just kind of works together. It all flows off of each other. I love the size of Family Ties. Yeah. Family Ties, the island is like 10 by five. Yeah. It's just, it's big. Everyone can kind of gather around and like hunch over and chat. I feel yeah. like it's just a congregating place in, in that home. Like the kitchen is just where people hang out. And there's like the walk-in pantry. It's just, the whole vibe of it, the whole flow is just right. really nice. On the back surround, we used a handmade tile that I think was kind of a nightmare to install, but... The tile guy was not happy with me after that. But so piece worth it. Piece. So, yeah, it so worth it, I feel right. like. And you can tell wow. the backsplash is that handmade tile that kind of... It has a little movement in the color, which I think is so pretty going all, up all the way through the Looks shelves. Looks good. I feel that one was so hard to install. Because <laughs> every piece, I mean, it's this handmade tile the, yeah, that you spec. And I, like, yeah. I remember we opened the box and he's like, are you kidding overwhelmed. me? Overwhelmed. Like, because every piece is like... I think that was like, every tile in that house but, was pretty overwhelming. But the thickness is different because it's yeah. handmade and... That and would, that's what makes it so beautiful. You look at it now and it's like... But he's installing, he's like, Brett, you know these yes. edges are not the same yeah. and it's not going to come together the that's same. That's handmade. And, it's, it it and turned I, out so good. But he wasn't happy with me. <laughs> we got through it. <laughs> we got through it and he did a great job. And I think the finished product is like... That's, yeah, one, does, of our, one of our, one of our, one of my favorite. There projects. is a difference between going with that and maybe a knockoff. I mean, yeah, there, you can tell a handmade a versus like, I mean, I can tell, and I think most you people can. can tell. You just don't always have to budget, so yeah. you've got to compromise. And there are ways to cut around that for sure. Yeah. I think you look at it the way it comes together through construction. I mean, you designed it. Again, it looks totally like the rendering, but to make it work, I mean, you've got these shelves that have lights and outlets and everything that has to like balance and look good and the, the tile you want to make sure the shelves go in before you bring the tile up to it you want to make sure the the wires for the lights are in the wall before you put the shelves in and then you 
you know, you bring them out the exact location and height you want. Everything needs to be thought through, and that's why you have a great designer kind of draw it out so it makes it easy for me yeah, you guys and executed the guys. It. Yeah, you really executed it perfectly, though. The placement of the shelves, the where the sconces hit, I mean, that's kind of a labor of love in itself is making sure the, the shelves and the sconces are perfectly aligned. And I think it just job. takes a good team from start to yeah. finish. Kitchen is so important because that's where you spend most of your time, that's where your family is, and that's one of my favorite things to design. There you have it, kitchens are done, and that's a wrap. That's it. That's it. <laughs>